So I said to him years ago, well, you invested cases for the British government. Like, what are your top cases? And he said, Rendlesham Forest, 1980, December. It was a landing of an object that, that the officers came up and touched. Crazy case. And Calvine, which happened in 1990. And he said, I said, tell me about this Calvine. He said, well, there were two hikers and they, uh, it was August 1990, and they were um, hiking up on the hills in a little town called Calvine, C-A-L-V-I-N-E. And um, apparently they were illegally poaching, but that's a, another story altogether. They came upon a sort of disc or diamond-shaped object that was hovering about 200 feet, which would be, what, 70 meters, something like that, off the ground, totally silent, um, large, and they were, they didn't know what they were looking at. I mean, they were, they got some cover under a tree. They were kind of hiding out, freaked. What, what is, what is this thing? They really didn't make any sound, didn't have any air disturbance. And then a one or two Harrier jets came in and flew around it. At which point the guy, one of the witnesses had a camera and he took a film camera and he took six shots of this object as the Harrier jet went round it. Moments later, the object, according to the two witnesses, accelerated from here and went straight up into the sky at an unearthly speed. And it never made any noise or caused any air disturbance and the jets were gone. Though they arranged to have the photographs taken to the local newspaper. The local newspaper was gonna run the story with the six photographs. They reached out to the MOD and the RAF for comment. Hey, we're going to run this story on this these guys that claim to see this thing, and and um, would you could you give us a comment? And it was, it was this guy. He was the uh, Royal Air Force press officer by the name of Craig Lindsay. And the reason why we know this is because this guy David Clark has done extensive research on this case. Thank you, David. David Lindsay says, "Well, how can I make a comment? I haven't seen the photograph. I haven't seen them." And the local paper says, we'll, we'll send you one of the prints. So they did send him this print. And it was August 1990. Sends the print off to this guy, Craig Lindsay. And he says, wow, okay, this is interesting. This is not your typical UFO report. Every time you hear a UFO report, you're always expecting like a little blobby, a little, a little white blob off of the, you know, uh-uh, mm -hmm. this is a structured craft, broad daylight, points of reference, a military jet flying around it. I mean, this is exceptional. So he somehow the MO, so the RAF, so he starts to look into it. He contacts the Ministry of Defense. The Ministry of Defense steps in, tells Craig Lindsay at the RAF, hey, we got this. You can step down. And so at which point Craig Lindsay had already met with at least one of the witnesses and possibly both of the witnesses and interviewed them. Okay. So he got their account. He's got a photograph. So Craig Lindsay's now out, okay? Now the MOD steps in, and they get all the photographs. The story never goes to print, and the witnesses vanish. So I'd heard about that. To me, it seemed like a clear-cut story that it was covered up. And I said to Nick Pope, where are the photographs? He says, well, we had one of them blown up in this huge poster on the inside of the MOD office where we investigated UFO reports. I said, well, what happened to that? He kind of like shrugged his shoulders, I don't know, you know, and I harassed Nick for quite some time, probably the better part of two decades. And then again, thank you, David Clark, the research of David Clark finds the RAF officer, Craig Lindsay, this was just last year, Craig Lindsay happened to have kept that print for 33 years and out it came in a roundabout way. So now we have one of the six copies of the film footage, but we're looking for the witnesses to come forward again today, which is, it was August, 1990. And what are we now? Uh, August. 32 years ago. Uh, yeah. Aug years August, ago. 2023. Right. Are we? So, so I have, so, how, so if, if by chance any of these people are watching or they've told maybe well, their sons yes. by chance they know this story, how so, can they contact well, so, you? Or well, how do me, you go about that? There's a very specific thing I'd like to read, if yeah, I may, please. because it's it's really important that I get yeah, this yeah. right. 
And this came in from, well, you know, I might have to keep them anonymous. So let me, let me read this. Um, okay. Here's what we know. And this is, we don't know this to be factual, everything I'm going to say here, but it's this, we, we think. Mm -hmm. Kevin Russell, it says care of Kevin Russell on the back of the photograph. I sent you one of the videos. You can play yep. it and see it. On the back of the photograph, we don't think it was the original of the two witnesses. He was most likely a friend who acted as a middleman and took the images to the Scottish Daily Record. The two witnesses were illegally poaching and had taken pictures of their kill immediately before seeing the object. Source stated that the film reel showed their kill before the six images. Defense intelligence visited the two witnesses and colleagues stated that they were visibly shooken. One left the area to live with his mother on the west coast of Scotland. There were two Harrier jets caught in the six photographs. We're led to believe that one was RAF and the other was U.S. Marines. Again, we don't know for sure. No trace of these jets has been successful, certainly in the public eye. I brought this up with Nick Pope at the Ministry of Defense. He still restricted on what he can say, but this was just a couple of days ago. And Nick said to me, perhaps there's data missing in the official Ministry of Defense files that even himself was unable to get access to. In other words, they could have found those pilots, they could have given their testimony, and that could have been all classified. We don't know. Um, Source and Tillens found a very clever way to cover up the entire case. The MOD covered up the entire case. Some people say that it could be some super secret or, or radar reflector Craig Lindsay, Nick Pope, don't believe that explanation, but we don't know for sure. So if anyone is out there, please, pretty please with sugar on top, even if you want to do it somewhat anonymously, you can find me on Twitter at at James C as in Charlie Fox, at James C Fox. My feed is open. I'm tempted to give my email address out as well because I, if they don't want to find, go onto Twitter, but I'd have to say they can message me on Instagram. They or, can. Well, uh, well but James some, English too. They can message me on Twitter, Facebook. Um, I've got an email there where the team uh, watch as well. People can just click the email. Okay. Just think it for other options for yourself. I would turn myself into a pretzel to be able to meet those witnesses. Um, so please. If you're listening to this, please come forward. If anyone has any information on this case, please, pretty please with sugar on top, come forward. <laughs>